Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Full Gear 2024 went down, and you're asking yourself, well, what just happened? And I'm going to tell you, I was there last night, very much enjoyed the show. It's a good card, because, you know, AEW has an oops all beggars thing going on, but we had three matches on the pre-show. We had Deanna Peraza versus Anna J. Um, there were a lot of empty visible seats here, but it was the first match. Fans were still filling in in the arena. It was all well and good. And a J gets the win there. Then we had a fatal four way match between Commander Buddy Matthews, Beast Marshals, and Dante Martin, with Buddy Matthews getting the W there. And then we had our quote unquote main, main event for the pre show, which was Big Boom AJ versus QT Marshall. This was a fun match with the crowd. Was very, very much involved and very much enjoyed it. Big Boom got the win. Big Show, I'm sorry, Paul White was involved as well. And before we get to the main card, Mercedes Monet uh, verbally abused Camille backstage, tell, uh, talking about, you know, did I actually speak? Are you dumb or are you stupid? Don't come to the ring. I'm going to show you how to get the job done. And we have the Guns N' Roses November Rain video. And then we move over to the main card, ladies and gentlemen. We had a non match card plus a special segment for the Women's Championship. So, our opening contest was the Fatal 4 Away Tag Team Match with our champions, Private Party, defending against Kings of the Black Throne, the Acclaimed, and the Outrunners. And this was your fairly standard party tag team match. Um, it was very, very fun. Everybody was over in either a good or a bad way. With the most over team being the Kings of the Black Throne, Malachi Black and Brody King, followed by the Outrunners. The fans were really uh, turning on Max Caster here, but Caster was acting heelish. He and um, Bones were not on the same page uh, as there was a miscommunication which caused them to not win the match because they had the match won. But in the end, uh, the private party got the W with the gin and juice. I'm looking forward to their next few, but this is exactly what you expect from these four teams. Uh, this was the most dissension we've seen between the acclaimed. We're wondering, I'm wondering who's going to break up first, the acclaimed or the new day. Then we had a backstage interview with Lexi Nair interviewing Orange Cassidy. Um, and he sends a message to the Death Riders that he will be walking out as the new AEW World Champion. We had a match that was fairly, fairly obvious of who was going to win, Ryder Strong versus M. JF and this was standard this was good this was typical it was very very solid because you know well MJF and Max uh, MJF and and Ryder Strong are good wrestlers the match wasn't super super memorable but it's good for this point in the story MJF got the win making Ryder Strong tap out to the salt of the earth after the match uh, MJF brought in a ring sorry but a steel chair into the ring wrapped it around uh, placed it you know, on, on Roderick Strong's wrist and he pretty much pilmanized him and then Adam Cole and the Kingdom came out which sounds which was weird like you saw him doing this y'all just couldn't come out earlier um, Kyle O'Reilly came out to help um, Roderick Strong to the back and he pushed Adam Cole off things are breaking down between the Undisputed Kingdom and now we see how Kyle O'Reilly fits the story next up we had what was my match of the night Mercedes Monet defending the TBS Championship against Chris Statlander this was absolutely fantastic this was such an awesome match um, I don't know when where and how the hate for Mercedes Monet started uh, but Y'all need to put some respect to her name and recognize just how great of a wrestler she is. She has been the catalyst for a lot of women's wrestling today. And she is too important to this industry and the history of this business to be disrespected. And Chris Lander, Chris Statlander showed you why. Well, she is up there as well. This was an absolutely banger of a match going almost 20 minutes. This is the longest match in the history of AEW for the women. And it was back and forth. Both women taking control. Big moves here and there. And in the end, Mercedes Monet, who had been attacking Statlander's knee for the better part of the second half of the match, got the W as uh, Chris was going for the uh, Sunday Night Fever. Couldn't get the W. Mercedes wins. This was such a good match. Very, very, very excited to see where we go here. These two could definitely put on another match. 
We had Hangman Page versus Jay White, our fourth match in the card. This was going down in the first hour, so it was pretty good. Um, this is a very standard, solid affair. Went about 20 minutes. I don't think it needed to go 20 minutes, but it built very, very slowly. But honestly, the ending was what, what made this match really good as they were going back and forth. Uh, Hangman could not get the buckshot off, and... Uh, Jay just countered a kick right into the Blade Runner. Uh, Hangman was using the ankle lock for the whole, for, you know, for the better part of the match, attacking that leg. But in the end, the Blade Runner came out of nowhere, picking up that W for Jay White. So he gets the W, and he's making his way to the back. He gets attacked by Hangman, who then also uh, hits Christopher Daines. And I don't think we're done with these two here but there will probably be another suspension and fine for hangman on page but this was a solid match then we had what many people will probably go with their match of the nights will osprey kyle fletcher and this was absolutely amazing and the story of this match here was that kyle fletcher knows will osprey so he was able to counter a lot of osprey's moves i mean at one point he hit osprey with a tombstone power driver on the steel steps and yet that was not enough and as we get to the ending of the match at the 18 minute mark with there's still six minutes left to go after that we got the fight for every chance because these two dudes were just tearing the house down styles clashes and blade hidden blades um no tiger driver but will osprey ran out of energy he just he just ran out of energy um after that tombstone until the steel steps right Got him back in the ring. He hit the uh, Fletcher hit the Grimstone Power Driver, which didn't get the win. So he smiled. Took Osprey to the corner. Osprey's trying to fight back, trying to fight back. Still can't do anything. So Osprey put him in the corner. I mean, Fletcher put him in the corner. Close lined him. Hit a running kick and then hit a top rope beam breaster on onto the top turnbuckle. And Osprey just bounced off that joint. One, two, three, and we get our winner. Kyle Fletcher defeats. Will Osprey an absolutely fantastic match. Martin Davis, friends of both, former tag team partner of Kyle Fletcher, came out to check on Osprey. Then we had our championship champagne celebration with, with me to share a cow with MRI made the two friends, the two besties. And this was going all well and good. They celebrated, and we were all expecting, you know, Tony Storm to show up. But she did not, but something else happened. As the celebration is ending, um, they begin to dance, and Mariah went to swing the champagne bottle at Mina Shirakawa, and she ducked it and was shocked and speared her off the ramp and through some tables. And looks like this friendship is over. But Shirakawa got up, blood flowing from her mouth, and she wiped it and kissed Mariah's forehead. So it looks like uh, Mina Shirakawa is here to stay will she defeat mariah may for the championship i'm not sure but it's a good um opponent for mariah may next up we had jack perry versus Dan garcia as jack perry was defending the tnt championship this was a really really good match you went 18 minutes i don't think it needs to go 18 minutes um perry's matches get a little slow but they all they also build up this was a just a really good match with some good technical ability here while jack perry is that fighter in the end dan Garcia is able to become the new tnt champion and these two young stars show why they are the future of this business why are the the pillars of this company and um garcia did not fall for jack perry's mind games which ultimately cost jack perry allowing dan garcia to become the new tnt champion but this was solid a solid solid affair and i think we're going to start seeing the fall of the elite next up we have the international championship with kanosuke takeshita defending against ricochet and again another really good match on this card this drone went 20 minutes um and it was just like we're getting good match after good match after good match but this was very very solid don Callis out there in his lemon pepper steppers you know what i mean backing up his his man to cash it ricochet did everything he could but it was not enough for the alpha as he won with a top rope jackhammer and a clean win no interference no involvement um this was this was good it's not like Ricochet isn't on the level of Takeshita because he is. He just has to climb that ladder definitely a, a little bit more. And this is a big win for Takeshita, but Ricochet isn't going anywhere. This was a really good match. 
um, because I think these two are just incapable of having bad matches. But Ricochet was booked well here, and he does not suffer from the loss. Then we had Swerve Strickland versus Bobby Lashley, and this was what you do. That's what you do. That's how you do it. Bobby Lashley ends up defeating Swerve Strickland. I kind of wanted this to be a squash of Lashley over Swerve, but this one gets tainted a little bit as the Hurt Syndicate got involved. Sean Benjamin West taking it to the back. Uh, Swerve did everything he could Even by hitting um, Lashley with a Swerve Stomp putting him through the table But it was not enough As ultimately Lashley locked in the Hurt Lock And that was all she wrote Yes it was a tainted finish uh, But you couldn't ha really have Swerve win but It would have made sense But you really can't You gotta define Lashley up to the higher level I don't think this is over between them two Uh there's more to come. There's definitely going to be more to come with them. Then after the match, Lashley put Prince Nana in a hurt lock. And yeah, uh, Swerve is going to need some major, major backup. And lastly, the main event, the AEW World Championship with John Moxley defending against Orange Cassidy. And it's <clears throat> even before the match started, Cassidy hit Mox with multiple Orange punches just to get this party started. And this was just a fight. Fans were behind Maxley. Fans were behind Cassidy. Um, there was so much to go involved here to go down, and Cassidy put up a value effort. This was brutal. This was this was this was uh, um, a big big match. Mox biting into Cassidy's forehead. Um, Cassidy. Trying to get that ever mentioned W going forehead to forehead, blow to blow with Mox. And the rest of the Death Riders tried showing up, tried to get involved. And it, it kind of worked. Claudio and Pop walked to the ring. Uh, Rocky Romero and the rest of the conglomeration came to the ring to offset Claudio. Rocky helped take out them as Marina Shavir got into the ring. My wifey, the love of my life, will or not a good return from her concussion, taking out Marina Shafir. Um, so as as the ref is checking on Marina and, and Willow as they're fighting to the back, Will Yuta got into the ring and hit a low below. He hit a boost psycho knee. Brian Dancers move. Mox is the death rider for the one, two, three. And there you go. You got to do what you got to do. You have to try and top the Death Riders. But wait, there's more. As Mox uh, is holding up Cassidy, they're pouring green disinfectant all over his face, just burning him, hurting him. Hangman Page comes out with a chair and hits Yuta, and he looks at Mox. And I'm like, what is going on here? Then Christian Cage comes out and gives Mox the unprettier. And Christian asked Hangman for the metal case with the contract. Hangman hesitated, but then handed it to him. As Hangman walked over the ramp, Christian waited way too long because then Jay White came out and gave Christian a Blade Runner. So Claudio attacked Jay White and then Pac joined in. And as they're running away to try to get into the car, another car drives up and smashes into the truck. So they got to get the keys. Pac just obliterates this, this uh, uh, valet with a kick. They take keys to someone else's car and they're gone so who was in the car that drove into the truck it was Darby Allen returning bloody brutal you know the crazy part is y'all earlier before the show me and my buddies witnessed a three car accident yeah um he ended up uh Darby ended up destroying the truck and he's not done he's coming for the Death Riders, but overall, this was ultimately a good show. My match of the night is probably it, it's it's going to Willow instead. I know Chris and uh, I know Osprey and not Willow instead, Mercedes instead, and I know people are gonna pick Osprey and Claude Fletcher. It was up, that's up there. They're probably they were the two best matches of the night. I just had to go with Mercedes and Chris Taylor in an absolutely fantastic match. But that is our show. Good show, good show. We're building up to what's the next event? I think Revolution is the next event. But we got a couple shows in between. Come back, Howard's Wrestling Podcast every Saturday to recap later today. It's going to be good. AEW, once again, does it with an oops, all bangers. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.